I welcome you to our leadership development uh, session tonight in Jesus' name. And I pray that the Lord will make us see ourselves as leaders, leaders that need development and leaders that need training. And all these sessions we have on Tuesdays as we come together, that the Lord will use what we're hearing and train every one of every one of us and build us up in Jesus' name. Good leadership, Amen. Father, we thank you this day. We bless your name for your goodness. We thank you because you have chosen us. We thank you because you have put us in place, men and women, so that we can be the leaders we ought to be. I'm asking, Lord, you open to us the leadership aspect of this passage tonight in Jesus' name. Help us to grow up. Help us to move forward. Help us to make progress in every area of ministry in Jesus' name. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. Consider we're coming to First Peter chapter 2. And I'm reading from verse 1. As we look at this passage, I want you to speak to Peter, the apostle, a leader, and talking to the people or writing to the people as members of the church or members of the body of Christ. And he wanted to develop them. He wanted to be an instrument as a leader to develop all the people he wrote to. And then you put yourself in that place, in the place of Peter. That he is to make yourself, you understand, you're a leader. And you look at the congregation that you have, the people you have, and see how the world we're reading tonight will get to them, will train them, will build them up, will transform them, and they will be the kind of children and the kind of members that God wants all the members of the church to be. So understand? And go through this passage with that perspective. I'm coming to First Peter chapter 2, and I'm reading from verse 1. Wherefore laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speaking. This is the apostle, the leader talking to them, and this is what he wanted of them. And this is what we want of our members too. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that she may grow thereby. The leader, uh, the apostle is talking to the children, is talking to those who are just born again, and is giving them a charge, is giving them a commandment. Desire the sincere milk of the word so that you will grow. Already he was telling them, you're not going to remain the way you are now. You must grow up. You must move forward. You must progress in your Christian life. And then in verse 3, so be that ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious to whom coming as unto a lively stone disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious, is introducing Christ to them again. They've seen him as Savior. They've seen him as their substitute. They've seen him as the final sacrifice that is given and uh, committed for our sins. But now he looks at Jesus Christ. He said, the one you have come to is actually chosen of God and is a living stone. And then it says in verse 5, he also... If Christ is the living stone, ye also, you have come to know the Lord. You are a child of God. Ye also, believers, ye also children of God, as lively stones. Christ, the Savior, is living stone. The believer in Christ is referred to here as lively stones. A built up, a spiritual house, and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. 
is saying that you believers talking to his own members talking to the people that he has leadership oversight on is saying you ought to understand you are not just to receive hear the word of god and receive the grace of god you are also to offer something to the lord as a holy priesthood and you are to offer spiritual sacrifices unto God which is acceptable to him through the Lord Jesus Christ he comes back now to explain to the people expound to the people and challenge the people for them to have a greater understanding a better understanding of who Christ their Savior is wherefore also it is contained in the scripture behold i lay a zion a chief cornerstone elect precious and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded unto you believers therefore which believe is precious but unto them would be disobedient the stone that's the living stone the stone that's the cheap corner stone the stone which the builders have rejected or disallowed is become the same is made the hedge of the corner but a stone of stumbling and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense even to them which stumble at the world being disobedient and whereunto also they were appointed it says the disobedient they have their own place to go where they are appointed but the obedient children they have their own place to that god has appointed for them it says but she a chosen generation a royal priesthood and holy nation a peculiar people that ye should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness he was reminding them we ought to remind the people we're ministering to that they are called out of darkness and they are now brought into his marvelous light they reminds them their past reminds them they were not people of god but grace has brought them in the love of god has brought them in is reminding us how to speak to our people how to educate our people edify our people and tell them this was what they were in the past and this is what they are today what they ought to be today verse 10 which in time past were not people but are now the people of god which had not obtained mercy but now have obtained mercy as we go through this you understand the mind of a leader the mind of a minister what the lord has appointed him for and what christ has put him in place for and what he's supposed to do as he speaks as he ministers as he manifests the grace of god and the truth of god unto the congregation that's why tonight we're looking at the message the able ministers of god's peculiar people the able ministers of god's peculiar people god's people those who are saved god's people those who have been brought connected with christ god's people those who have tasted of what calvary has provided the god's peculiar people and you are brought up now as a minister and you are raised up now as a minister and you want to be able ministers of god's peculiar people in second corinthians chapter 3 second corinthians chapter 3 we're reading from verse 5 second corinthians chapter 3 verse 5 not that we are sufficient of ourselves as leaders 
we're not sufficient of ourselves we cannot do this great work and build up the church of god and build up the people of god without the grace for the ministry and he says not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think any sin of ourselves but our sufficiency is of god god will give you sufficient grace sufficient strength sufficient power and sufficient stamina to do what he has called you to do as able ministers of God's peculiar people. Look at verse 6. Who also has made us able ministers of the New Testament, of the New Covenant. It's made us able ministers, capable ministers, effective ministers, progressive ministers, and the ministers that are able to do what the Lord has raised them up to do. And I pray that His grace also abide and abound. That we, in that grace, and we, in that strength, will be able ministers in Jesus' name. The able ministers of God's peculiar people. As we come into the ministry, we understand we have a ministry towards all the people of God. On the one hand, all sinners. On the other hand, all saints. On the one hand, God's creatures. On the other hand, the redeemed people of God. On the one hand, the people who are just coming into the faith, we have ministry towards them. On the other hand, the people who have come already and they are growing in their faith already, we have a ministry to them. And we need to understand the extent, the height, the depths, and all the aspects of ministry we ought to have. And we need to be ministers with a purpose and with a goal so that we will accomplish what he has called us to do. You'll be a fulfilled minister, purposeful ministers in Jesus' name. We're to reach out to sinners. We're to feed the saints. We're to help the new converts. We're to help the growing believers. We're to mature the sons and the daughters of God. And we're to raise up disciples and capable servants of God. And we're to lead them in such a way that we reproduce Christ in all the people we're ministering to. With that understanding, we come to First Peter chapter 2 from verse 1 to verse 10. Three points we're thinking about, we're talking about tonight. Number one, liberating babes from the life of godlessness. Liberating babes, those babes are the new converts. They just came into the kingdom. And the life they're familiar with, the things they were familiar with in the past, is a life of godlessness. But now they have repented. Now they have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. And now they take Jesus as their personal savior. They're still babes because they know next to nothing of the doctrines of the Bible. They're ignorant, although they are innocent now. They are forgiven now, but then they need to know a lot. And you are the leader to help liberate them from the life of godlessness. Point number one, liberating babes from the life of godlessness. Point number two, leading believers up the ladder of growth. Leading believers up the ladder of growth that she may grow thereby and so you look at the believers and you say i have a duty i have a responsibility and it is to lead the believers 
under your leadership to lead the believers who are under your teaching under your preaching to lead believers in your local church and in the extended church in the ladder of growth up the ladder of growth point number two leading believers up the ladder of growth point number three living without blame or blemish for the lord of glory the life we live we're leaders but we're christians too we're leaders we're believers too we're leaders we're on our way to heaven too and we need to know the life to live the life that will glorify god and the life that will be a good example to the believers who are leading and we're living only for the glory of god purposefully for the glory of god always for the glory of god living without blame or blemish for the lord of glory point number one tell me your number one over there let me hear preachers voices Liberating babes from the life of God lessons. Let's look at it from number point from verse one. It says, Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings as newborn babes. Those are the babes you want to make sure are totally liberated. They are totally set free. They are totally redeemed. They are cleansed. And their lives become different. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the world, that ye may grow thereby. If so be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. You come to Hebrews chapter 12. What we need to emphasize to the babes and to all the members of the church is that there's something to lay aside. You have come out of darkness, there's something to lay aside. You have come out of the world, there's something to lay aside. You have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, there's something to lay aside. You now rejoice in your newfound faith with the joy of salvation. There is something to lay aside. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside something to lay aside and you know for the leader himself if he wants to be a good example unto the people he's leading and unto, the, unto these babes he also should have laid aside all that the scripture is telling us to lay aside a baby comes to the family here is daddy here is mommy and then the mother the father they do not want this baby to grow up in an abnormal way they want the character of the baby to be all right they want the social activities to be all right and so they themselves whatever they expect the baby will not grow into they themselves will not manifest that and we as pastors and we as leaders will want these babes in christ to lay aside all these things we ourselves should have laid them aside they should not be part of our lives in our personal private lives in our places of work in our community in our interaction with other people what we're expecting and what we're teaching and what we're encouraging the babes in christ to lay aside we ourselves must have laid them aside verse one wherefore seeing we also 
accompass about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight, whatever will weigh you down, whatever will be like a heavy weight that will not allow you to run the race the Lord has called you to run, lay aside. Whatever the word of God commands that should not be part of the life of a Christian, of a believer, of a stranger and pilgrim here on earth, lay them aside. Whatever has caused you to backslide in the past, lay them aside. And then you are showing us a leader, a good example to the babes in Christ that are coming after us. And then it says, lay aside the sin which does so easily beset us. The sin that the carnal nature that is not uprooted yet may attract. The sin that does so easily beset us, lay them aside and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Verse 2, looking unto Jesus, as we lay them aside, looking unto Jesus, he'll help you. As we lay them aside, looking unto Jesus, he has promised he'll give you abundant grace and sufficient grace. Looking unto Jesus, he's helped other people, and he's helped other people to live clean, and to live pure, and to live holy. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, oh, for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, endured the cross that means you as a leader if there are difficulties and challenges and crosses you have to endure you look at Christ and you're doing this you're doing this for yourself you're doing this for the babes who want to liberate and they will be able to say if God has given the grace to the leader then he can give me the grace. He will give you the grace. Abundant grace. Sufficient grace. And you lay all these things aside as an example, as a pattern for the people you are leading in Jesus' name. And the other cross despising the shame. And he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 3, reading from verse 18. Like Britain, the believers, so that they will grow. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, reading from verse 18. It says, But we all, with open face, beholding us in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory even as by the Spirit of the Lord as we look at Jesus as we learn more of Jesus since we have tasted that the Lord is gracious we have tasted of the grace of God and we know he is our pattern he is the perfect example and we are to follow in his steps we are looking unto him and looking at him and gazing at him then we are transformed from one level of glory to another level of glory in Ephesians chapter 4 Ephesians chapter 4 like preaching the babes in Christ who are under our coaching, under our teaching, under our training, under our program of development, like preaching them from the past life of godlessness. In Ephesians chapter 4, reading from verse 22, the chief put up concerning the former conversation, the old man. The new combat doesn't know that. The babe doesn't know that. The babe in Christ thinks 
God will take it away by himself. And he doesn't know that he needs to make any effort at all. He needs to endeavor to do that. He doesn't know that. And we are the leaders that will teach them and instruct them and tell them, put it off, lay it aside, get it out of your life. It says that he put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed. Is there is possibility. We need to tell them. That's how they'll be liberated. That they'll be renewed in the spirit of their mind. And that she put on the new man. We're talking to the babes and we're telling them, you'll put off the old dirty clothes. You'll put off the past clothes that do not size you or fit you anymore. And then when you put that off, then you put on the new clothes. You are washed, you are cleansed. After the cleansing and the washing, you put on the new clothes. And in verse 24, that she put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. We're coming back to First Peter chapter 2 and in particular now instead of just talking only in generalities just put up put off and lay aside we're now specific because these are the normal lives of the be of these new babes in the past there were things that were very common and they're still very common today Number one, malice, anger, wrath, that he has offended me, I have malice, will not even greet. If he greets me, I will not answer. It's the general sin in the life of sinners. And because this is very common, we're particular about it to the babes in Christ. Lay that aside. And then all guile, that's deception. That's a kind of, you know, coloring things, either exaggerating or we're just living in deception. It's a common thing in society. And the baby Christ who just came to the Lord will need to know if there's going to be any change that shows that we're new creatures in Christ. This is something to lay aside deliberately. And then uh, hypocrisies. You know how common that is. I service in the places of work. We appear to be walking feverishly when the boss is around. When the boss is not around, we are relaxed because no eye is watching us now. That's the life of the unbeliever. And this baby in Christ, remember, the one we are calling baby in Christ, maybe 30 years old. Baby in Christ, maybe 40 years old. Baby in Christ, maybe 60 years old. If he has just come to know the Lord, the past life of eye service, lip service, and the past life of hypocrisies, he must lay aside envies. Envy is common and general in the life of the sinner. If uh, that one has a better car, he's envious. If this one has better outlook, he's envious. If that one has a better property, he's envious. That's the life of the sinner. And it's very common in society. And those common things, we want to instruct the babes in Christ, lay them aside. And then uh, all evil speaking. It's like society encourages speaking evil of people, saying naughty things about people, saying bad things about people. And if you don't join them, they look at you like you are strange. These babes in Christ who have just come to the Lord, they need to lay all this aside. Remember once again, we as leaders, 
if we expect the babes to lay them aside the babe in Christ is looking at us I just came into the kingdom I'm just about one month or six months old in the kingdom my leader has been in the Lord for 10 years for 20 years for 30 years and yet I find this saying in him if he himself cannot be free from all this in 10 years in 20 years of following the Lord what hope do I have as a babe in Christ that's why we lead by example there'll be no malice in our lives I can't hear my people first Corinthians chapter 5 I'm reading from verse 8 first Corinthians chapter 5 verse 8 therefore let us keep the feast not with the old leaven neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth in first Peter chapter 3 first Peter chapter 3 I read from verse 10 in verse 10 for he that will love life and see good days let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak tell me there no girl let him eschew evil shun evil and do good let him seek peace and seal it for the eyes of the lord are over the righteous and his ears are open unto their prayers but the face of the lord is against them that do evil there'll be no girl in our lives first first timothy chapter four i'm reading from verses one and two first timothy chapter four we're looking at verses one and two now the spirit speaketh expressly is the holy ghost talking here the spirit the holy ghost the third personality of the godhead speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith i will not depart from the faith i will not depart from the faith how do we know those who have departed from the faith verse one giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils speaking lies in hypocrisy those who are hypocritical and they speak lies in their hypocrisy they have departed from the faith and if you are going to lead the babes to remain in Christ and to remain in the faith then you yourself will be free from the spirit of the last days having their conscience seared with a hot iron in Romans chapter 1 reading from verse 28 Romans chapter 1 reading from verse 28 and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Remember, we are helping the babes to be liberated, liberated from malice, liberated from guile, liberated from hypocrisies, liberated from envies and the lord says here as they did not like to retain god in their knowledge if the babe does not like to retain god in his knowledge and to be trained and to be liberated from all these things then god can abandon him look at that verse 28 again 
And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy. That's the sin we are to lay aside permanently. And that's the sin the babes are to lay aside permanently. And also murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boosters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents. We tell them to lay that aside without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death. We don't want those babes in Christ to die spiritually, to fade out, or to fall away. That's the reason why we're helping them to be liberated from all these things, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. We're coming back to James chapter 1, verse 26. James chapter 1, verse 26. They are to lay aside also all evil speaking. You find the seven in the plural. All forms of evil speaking. The babes in Christ are to be liberated from them, are to lay them aside. And we who are their leaders were to lay all that aside. James chapter 1, verse 26. If any man among you seem to be religious, and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. Your religion will not be vain in the sight of God. Second Peter chapter 2. Second Peter chapter 2, reading from verse 10. But chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise government, presumptuous are they, self willed. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. As you look at the nation, you see it's like people are trained to speak evil of those in authority in the government, authority in the church, authority in society. It's like they think they're proving good and nice when they do that. But we are to tell ourselves we're Christians, we're leaders, and so we lay aside all speaking of evil about leadership and about dignities. And we teach the converts, the babes in Christ, that they are to do the same. And we follow upon them. And when we catch them sleeping into that, we say, ah, ah, that's the old life. Come back to the new life. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. I said, the Lord will help you in Jesus' name. Point number two now, leading believers up the ladder of growth. I'm reading from 1 Peter chapter 2. And I'm reading from verse 2. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, 
that she may go thereby. The apostle does not want any of the converts under his leadership to be a perpetual baby and to be a permanent baby in the Lord. They are precious, precious babes in Christ, but not perpetual, permanent babies. They should grow as they hear the word of God. Number one, where they begin, babes in Christ. Number two, they grow to become children. They are not babes all their lives. They are not babes perpetually. But now they grow to become children. First Peter chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 14. As obedient children, let them grow. Children, obedient children. They understand the commandments of God. They understand the will of God. They understand the demands of God. And they are obedient. That's what shows they're growing. They're no more babes anymore. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former laws in your ignorance. But as he which has called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. And they don't remain children all their lives. They grow up to the next stage as young men. They are babes. You are helping them. You are nurturing them. You are feeding them. You are exercising them. You are showing them the example. And you are making them to do what to be them children ought to do. You do it in love. You do, it in, you do it in gentleness, but you do it all the same. Number one, babes, then they grow up, they become children, then they grow up, they become young men. I'm looking at First John chapter 2. First John chapter 2. You see here in chapter 2, as you look at verse 1, my little children my little children but go on now let's look at verse 13 all right unto you fathers because ye have known him that is from the beginning i write unto you young men because ye have overcome the wicked one young men ye have overcome the wicked one if they remain babes all their lives they cry at every difficulty if they remain babes all their lives they are afraid of every challenge but as they grow up from babes to being children and then to being young men he tells us now ye have overcome the wicked one look at verse 14 i have written unto your fathers because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, because ye are strong, and the word of God abideth in you, and ye have overcome the wicked one. We need to help the members, that the members will not be the same today as they were five years ago. They will not be crying at every problem, as babes cry, they must not be babes all their lives. They grow up and it is the ministry, it is the effort, it is the training, it is the teaching of the leaders to help them move on and to grow. And you see, it's, you see it says they have overcome the wicked one. In verse 13, they have overcome the wicked one. In verse 14, they have overcome the wicked one. That shows us something about the growth. Because, uh, let's look at this. We're looking at um, Second Timothy chapter 2. Verses 3 and 4. Second Timothy chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. That therefore endure hardness as a good soldier 
of Jesus Christ. Here is Paul talking to Timothy, his own son in the faith, and was assuring him, Timothy, this natural timidity, put it off. There is natural fear of men, put it off. And this cringing lifestyle, put it off. You're now a pastor, you're now a leader. Grow up and become like a soldier. That's gross, that's gross. You start from being a babe in Christ, and then you are one of the children in the Lord. And then you become one of the young men and you battle whatever it is that wants to pull you down and you overcome the wicked one. And you live the life of a disciplined soldier. That's what we are telling those babes. They are growing up, they are growing up. And we are the leaders to lead them up the ladder of growth. Look at that verse 3 again. Now, therefore, in dear hardness as a good soldier of jesus christ no man that worries and tangles himself with the affairs of this life that's what you're teaching those believers under our care that's what we are instructing all those believers under our care will do it wisely will do it persistently and will do it courageously and we're telling them they will not be entangled with the affairs of this life that he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier please him Please, the Lord who has chosen him to be a soldier. We are training them to climb up. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 5. 2 Timothy chapter 4. Reading from verse 5. But watch thou in all things. Don't be like a babe that is sleeping most of the time, most of the day. Don't be like a babe that thinks daddy and mommy alone are, in, are there that will watch over me. Be watchful now. You're growing up. And it says watch now in all things. Endure afflictions. Don't cry at every trial, every affliction, every problem. Endure afflictions. Don't call Paul on the phone. Apostle Paul, I'm going through something now. Something is going on. What's that going on? Affliction. And Paul replies, I have my own share of affliction as well. Timothy, you know what I'm doing? I endure. You know what I'm doing? I overcome. And I'm not going to, to you to come and remove that affliction. You too, as you are growing up, you endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. The Lord will do it in our lives. He'll do it in my life. I said he'll do it in my life. He'll do it in your life in Jesus' name. You know, be crying at every difficulty. Crying at every challenge. Going to be the prayer warriors because this is happening, that is happening. You will overcome. We're coming back now to First Peter, and I'm now reading First Peter chapter two, and in verse five, we're growing up. I pray we'll all grow up. I said I pray we'll all grow up. Those who are growing, I don't want to grow. Are saying Amen. The other people who are not sure, they are not saying Amen. We will all grow up in Jesus' name. Look at First Peter chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 5. Ye also, as lifeless stones, are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ here is gone beyond being a babe being a child 
being a young man, being a soldier, is now a stone, lively stone. And it's built along with other lively stones. And it's like one of the blocks on the wall. Some blocks beneath, some blocks above, some blocks by the side, and it remains there stable. It's not fidgeting, it's not restless, it's a stone, but a lively stone. And it remains in its place in the holy temple of God without restlessness, without saying, I want to come out of this place. It's now solid, it's now stable, it's now steadfast, and it's now steady like a stone. The Lord wants us to have that quality that whatever wind may be blowing and whatever challenge we may have we're not babes anymore we're in this area of work there's difficulty there we're on to another that's a babe and then there's uh, this challenge in our community and instead of praying it through and standing there steady and steadfast we're on to another community there's something going on in this uh, local church our district church and we cannot stand to correct that thing and we're on away from there and we go to another place we need to become stable and steadfast and solid and steady like a stone a lively stone that is built along with other stones to make up a holy temple Ephesians chapter 2 Ephesians chapter 2 I read from verse 20 and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone in whom all the buildings all the building fitly framed together grows up unto an holy temple in the Lord in whom he also are build it together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. You see what the Lord is telling us? You yourself must be that steady, that steadfast, that solid, dependable, that you are not running elder skelter because of some challenges which are bound to be there. But now, as you have been steady and stable yourself, you are able to help the people who are growing up. At whatever stage they are at, you know the next level they ought to grow to. And you are helping them, leading them to grow up the ladder or to go up the ladder of growth. We are coming to First Peter again. And I'm reading from verse 6, uh, reading chapter 2, First Peter, chapter 2, I read from verse 5, he also, as lively stones, a built up a spiritual house, and holy priesthood, and holy priesthood, and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Verse 9. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. As we build up our members, they understand they are to be part of the holy priesthood. And they have something to offer. We're not teaching them for nothing. You're a teacher in the school, and the students are growing up, and they're going from this basic class to the next class to the final class. When they get to that final class, they will get out of the school and they will work 
they will do something you know? they will make use of all the knowledge you have imparted unto them the same thing we as leaders we're not just having perpetual babies in the church they are always there is five years in the church under your leadership and he cannot offer spiritual sacrifice unto the Lord. He cannot do soul winning. He cannot pray for other people. He cannot teach other people. He cannot enlighten other people. He's not growing. We make them to grow and they're now part of the holy priesthood and are able to offer spiritual sacrifices unto the Lord. Hebrews chapter 13, I'm reading from verse 15. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 15. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually, not grumbling members, complaining members, if things do not go their way, they grumble, they criticize, everything will fall down, the roof will come down because there's a little pinch of a pebble or stone in their shoe. Let us grow up and let us help our members to grow up. This is the calling the Lord has given us that we will make the members to grow up and offer praises unto God continually. That he is the fruit of our leaves, giving thanks to his name. And you remember now the, the ladder of growth from the babes to the children to the young men to the sons to the soldiers to the holy priesthood and then to peculiar people peculiar people let the people were raising up let the people were building up let the people were teaching let the people who are ministering to let them understand the goal is not to remain at the base at the lowest level the goal is to, for them to become so peculiar that people will notice them and they will know they are not just like every deacon harry they will know that they have become peculiar peculiar in their lifestyle peculiar in their prayer peculiar in their standing peculiar in their living for the glory of god not that you know somebody is a christian under our leadership for all these many years and there's no peculiarity there's no distinction between him and the average church goer out there in the world we're looking at first peter chapter 2 verse 9 but here a chosen generation a royal priesthood and holy nation a peculiar people peculiar people uh, you know not all church goers are peculiar you know not all those who call themselves by the name of christ are peculiar some are like every deacon harry and some are like every other person but the people that have more of the grace of god in their lives they live and it's not difficult to tell their peculiar titus chapter 2 verse 14 titus chapter 2 verse 14 who gave themselves for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works they're zealous you want to bring them up in such a way they are fervent bring them up in such a way they are fiery bring them up in such a way they distinguish themselves differentiate themselves from all the other people around them number one babes number two children 
Number three, young men. Number four, soldiers. Number five, steadfast sons, tall, steady, and steadfast and stable. Number six, holy priesthood. Number seven, peculiar people. Number eight, strangers and pilgrims. First Peter, chapter two, verse eleven. First Peter, chapter two, verse eleven. Here is Peter the apostle as a leader. Our pattern, a pattern for us, showing those believers. You're not going to remain babes all your life. In fact, you understand, your citizenship is in heaven. And you're traveling through this world like strangers and pilgrims. Verse 11, Dearly beloved, I beseech you, as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts. You're not part of them in the world. Abstain from fleshly laws, you are a stranger here, you are a pilgrim here. You are not part of the entertainment industry. You are not part of those who are selling their flesh for money. You are not part of those who are walking and running like everybody in your street. But because you are strangers and pilgrims, know that you belong to another country, a better country, the heavenly country. Beloved, dearly beloved, I beseech you, as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. You will win the victory. The world will not overcome you. Satan will not overcome you and the flesh will not overcome you in Jesus name Point number three now living without blame or blemish for the Lord of glory living without blame or blemish for the Lord of glory in first Peter chapter 2 verse 9 for ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, an holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. He called us, and I were living for him, and he is the Lord of glory. And the life we live shall reflect who has saved us and for what reason he saved us. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, for the church that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church. That's the way he wants us to be. That's the life he wants us to live. He wants us to live only for his glory. Always for his glory and ever for his glory. So we can be a glorious church. Not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Your life will be without blemish. Your family will be without blemish. Your leadership and your lifestyle will be without blemish in Jesus' name. Philippians chapter 2. Reading from verse 15, Philippians chapter 2, reading from verse 15, that she may be blameless and harmless sons of God. That's why we're growing. We're sons of God. And now we're to live lives that are blameless and harmless without rebuke, 
in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world. Shine as lights in the world. He called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Shine as light in the midst of the people, crooked people in the world, in your place of work. Be peculiar, shine as light. In your community, be peculiar. In your language, in your conversation, in your discussions, in your interaction, you are a man with women. In your interaction, you are a woman with men. Shine as light and be peculiar. And know that what other people do, you cannot because you are peculiar. Others may, I cannot. Can you say that with me? Can you say that again? Others may, I will not. Can you say that? Say that again. Others may, I must not. Say that. Can you say that again? Let's say we say we're peculiar. They can live careless. They can live carefree. They can live frivolous. They can live for the flesh. But they may live as they want to live. We are babes in Christ. We are sons of God. We are children of God. We are soldiers in the army of the Lord. We are stable, steadfast, lively stones in the building, in the temple. We are peculiar people and we are strangers and pilgrims in this world. The way we live should reflect our face, our focus and the direction to heaven that we are going. Look at verse 16. In verse 16, holding forth the word of life that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. You know what the apostle is saying? The apostle is saying, you Philippians, I have ministered to you. And I have ministered for your growth, coming up and getting up. If you do not shine as lights in the world and distinguish yourself from the people of the world, there's nothing to show for my ministry. When we get over there, it will be as if I have run in vain. The same thing you are passing to your members. You are passing to the people you're teaching and training. If their lives do not reflect the light of the gospel, and if they don't become a shining light in their communities, if they don't become a shining light in their communities, it will be that on the final day, all this labor, all this evangelism, all this teaching and preaching, all this ministry run up and down, you would have labored in vain. You will not labor in vain. I said you will not labor in vain. You live the life without blame, without blemish, only, always, all, all together for the Lord of glory and lead the people you are leading. Make a difference in their lives. Make a remarkable difference in their lives that they are living by the light of the gospel. In First Thessalonians chapter 3, First Thessalonians chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 12. First Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 12. And the Lord make you to increase more and more, uh, to increase and abound in love one toward another. Amen. And toward all men, even as we do toward you, to the end, for the purpose he may establish your hearts unblameable. Establish your hearts unblameable. Don't excuse any blame and don't excuse any blemish and say, Well, how can you find any clothes that is so clean and you not have a stain? How can you have 
any person that is so righteous and holy and you'll not have a stain how can you find a worker a minister that is blameless and without blemish and you'll not find something to complain about don't excuse any blemish in your life or your leadership and the people you are leading let them see something bright and something good consistently so that in verse 13 to the end he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before god even our father at the coming of our lord jesus christ with all his saints amen in first thessalonians chapter 5 verse 22 first thessalonians chapter 5 verse 22 abstain from all appearance of evil that will take diligence that will take determination that will take watchfulness that will take the understanding that you know yourself and you see yourself as distinct as peculiar not just a child of god a minister of the gospel and you're not living like every deacon harry and you say i'm going to live up to the expectation of the lord in my leadership and the expectation of the people who are looking up to me abstain from all appearance of evil and the very god of peace sanctify you holy give me a good amen and i pray god here is paul the apostle praying for the meat for the people he had ministered to here is a minister he wants the members of the church he had ministered to to be all righteous all holy without blame without any blemish and the same thing we ought to desire we should not say i can't excuse anything you know i'm a gentle leader and i lead people the way they are i don't want to bother them I don't want to make them feel they are not uh, moving forward as quick as I desire. I don't want them to label me as a perfectionist. He wants everything to be perfect. I don't want that kind of label. Why not? Be perfect even as your father who is in heaven is perfect. The leader, Paul the Apostle, was praying for the people under his leadership. The very God of peace sanctify you holy. And I pray God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved. Tell me the next word there. Blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he who has called you who also will do it faithfully see who has called me faithfully see who has called me who also will do it he will do it in second corinthians chapter six second corinthians chapter six i read from verse one we then as workers together with him beseech you also that she receive not the grace of god in vain we are workers together with christ we're not isolated workers we're connected with him whatever he wants for the members under our leadership that's what we want whatever he desires for all the members under our leadership that's what we want and what does he want he wants them to be obedient he wants them to live holy he wants them to be peculiar we are workers together with him and his desire for our members is our desire his directives for our members is our directives his demand for our members is our demand the lights will shine 
your own light will shine and the light of our members will shine in Jesus name Matthew chapter 5 verse 16 Matthew 5 verse 16 let your light so shine don't cover it up I don't want them to know that I'm in deeper life why you're covering up your light I don't want them to know about sanctification sanctification I don't want to emphasize anything why you're covering up the light the light of the knowledge of God in your life and the light of your training and the light of everything God has done in your life open it up let them see and let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works that they may see your good works don't cover it all let them know let them see that this is where you stand and let them see that you are growing you are not a babe anymore you are not ashamed of everything that you believe anything you believe let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven first thessalonians chapter 2 in first thessalonians chapter 2 we're reading from verse 10 first thessalonians chapter 2 verse 10 ye are witnesses and god also paul the apostle lived his life in the open and he said you believers who have been under my teaching under my training under my development ye are witnesses and god also how holily and justly and unblameably we behaved ourselves among you that believe have you noticed when parents have new babies growing children and they are at the table the way they used to talk they don't talk like that anymore they observe table manners meticulously why because they're bringing up children and the same thing we are bringing up children children of god and because of that we live holily justly unblameably among the people that believe as she know how ye are we exalted and comforted and charged every one of you as a father does his children why look at verse 12 that she would walk worthy your members or our training that she would walk worthy you students under our teaching that she may walk worthy you upcoming ministers under our development that she would walk worthy of god who has called you unto his kingdom and glory the lord will help us first john chapter one i'm reading from verse five first john chapter one reading from verse five this then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all if we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness we lie and do not the truth but if we walk in the light you will walk in the light I will walk in the light. We shall all walk in the light in Jesus' name. If you are traveling, for example, and then you look around, you see there's no member of our church around. But there's somebody who knows you and has been looking at you. And he knows you are a pastor, you are a preacher. Or maybe you are a preacher's wife in deeper life. 
if you have been living anyhow and carelessly talking anyhow and you have a kind of a rough handled uh, the people who are getting you into the transportation whatever and then after afterwards after you've done all that rough uh, kind of uh, lifestyle somebody comes to greet you and he says uh, good afternoon sir good afternoon ma'am what are you going to do and you say do you know me and he says yes i know you are pastor of deeper life in uh, and then he mentions the local government area what are you going to do that's the reason why anywhere we are anywhere we go we walk in the light you want to walk in the light but if we walk in the light as he is in the light we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us, cleanses us, cleanses us from all sin. Your light must shine. Second Peter chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 11. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 11. Seeing then that all these sins shall be dissolved. What manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Holy conversation and godliness. Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt to a fervent heat nevertheless we according to his promise look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness wherefore beloved seeing that she look for such things be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace tell me what follows there tell me out aloud say it more clearly without spot or blameless that's the calling the lord has given us and the lord will make us able ministers of God's peculiar people in Jesus name we will not fail God we will not disappoint God all that has aligned before us as leaders as ministers what to do to bring souls into the kingdom and to raise up and to develop souls in the kingdom already by his grace enabling grace sufficient grace we shall do in jesus name you will like bridge the babes i was waiting for an amen you will lead the believers up the ladder of growth and you will live without blame without blemish only for the lord always for the lord ever for the lord of glory amen let's rise up now and take everything we've learned to the lord in prayer let's be matured people nobody running out to go and catch a boss nobody running out for anything we must take this to the lord in prayer and we must be serious minded people of god leaders in the kingdom that will live such a life without blame and without blemish and then you remember the members of your church your local church that god has given you oversight over that god will help you to lead them and make them grow if children do not grow it's a pain in the heart of their parents or their father and their mother if our members do not grow it should be a pain in our heart pray that the lord will help you so that our members will grow according to the revelation we have in the scriptures